Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Showroom Podcast. I am Mike Davenport and I'm joined by, you know, I usually say lovely, but before the <laughs> before the podcast portion of the started, you were kind of being mean to me. So I'm just, I'm I'm joined by Andy. <laughs> You're joined by your mean wife. Because <laughs> you are so, um, what's the word? Awesome. Thank no. you. I am awesome. I, I can't even think of the word I want to use. <laughs> Something along our lines of being a baby and, you know, just... Oh, you're calling me a baby? I love the little pet <laughs> names. Thanks. <laughs> you're so nice. I love... <laughs> this is why I've been married for so long. This is what happens when I spend this much time with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm really excited about today's episodes. We're going to talk everything credit. So um, there's so much information out there about credit. And uh, so a couple of the topics that we're going to do is how credit scores are actually formed. Um, a lot of people just don't understand this. They just think they pay their bills correctly and voila, they have a credit score or they're like, why do I have a 650 credit score instead of a 750 credit score? I pay all my stuff on time, right? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how banks determine if you're credit worthy or not. Uh, there's a lot of going into of uh, getting a bank loan on a car. It's not just, hey, I got a 750 credit score so I can go buy a $100,000 Corvette. It doesn't work that way. So there's a lot of different things out there. Or if you're 19 and you got a $300 credit card and you got an 800 credit score um, and you think you can just go in and buy any car you want in a car dealership doesn't work that way, but we're going to talk about what you do, yeah, what to do and how that works. Uh, we're going to talk about credit score ranges. We're going to talk about credit monitoring services. Uh, also, um, all of the different credit bureau models there are. So everybody knows about the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. But what you don't know behind the scenes is there are about 30 different other ones that we're going to talk about models. That is 30 different models. And then, um, I think I'm saying this correctly. You can, uh, uh, as you do really, really well, you can um, uh, correct, correct you. me. But uh, the biggest credit score misconception, like what people think about a credit score, and they're completely wrong on something. Did I say that right? Misconception? Maybe. Okay. Well, I, I Since you didn't bother to tell me this before the podcast, I didn't have time to think. Good. I like that. Well, that's that's one great great thing about our podcast is uh, that uh, we don't talk about our topics beforehand. I do all the research, and I got twenty years in the car business, and we bring that stuff to you uh, on a day by day basis or a week by week basis, I guess. And um, we have Mrs. Chevy Dude on here because she brings an element of consumer. Uh, advocacy as consumer knowledge, as well as not having all the car knowledge that I have. Obviously, she's been around me for 20 years in the car business as well. So that being said, she has a little bit of knowledge, but she doesn't live it and breathe it every single day that I do. So as you know, all of my live streams are brought to you by Surf Shark VPN. Let me tell you that you need to be thinking about your privacy online and you should be using a VPN like Surfshark. It's the VPN that I use, it's the VPN the show uses, and we trust it and always have it on when we're using public Wi-Fi traveling and even here at home. You should know that there are people and businesses looking for easy targets all of the time. So you need to keep your online activity private and start using a VPN. And it's not just security that makes a VPN cool. It's the ability to access sites that your country may not be allowing. They block it, they censorship it. And then also the ability to get better deals and save money because you can VPN to a different country and get a better deal. I just did it today for a trip to Vegas uh, coming up in June. Saved a ton of money compared to their M Life discounts that I VPN out of another country and we saved about a hundred bucks. So it's always nice to do that as well. Um, so now, uh, if you uh, so, why not just go try it out? Uh, Surfshark deals forward slash seven dude for a three percent discount and one additional month free. Use the link in the description with code Chevy dude for these amazing savings. And thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, if you want to type in your um, question, we saw one right at the beginning before the show went live about uh, average credit scores or average interest rates. We're going to get to that one uh, in the show. It's one of the things that I got talked about. So you can text your topic related questions to 502-909-5192. You can do this any time of the week. We look at, uh, she looks at uh, all the text questions that come in. If they're on topic, we'll definitely talk about them. Uh, that phone number is not for sales related questions because I do not look at that question and she knows that if we get something sales related to it that I don't even look at it I don't want to know about it because I got all these other streams of coming in 
So uh, 502 uh, 502-909-5192 is the uh, do it uh, to get the question in there. And, uh, of course, if you want to make sure that you do it, get your question answered, we li- we answer all Super Chats. Uh, you can join us live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on the Chevy Dude YouTube channel and then every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Central uh, Eastern Time. My editor's in Central Time, uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, we push this to all the podcast platforms. So, uh, unbeknownst to Dave Ramsey, everybody in this country needs a credit score. Yes, 100% of the people, adults 18 and over, absolutely have to have a credit score. And you'd be like, well, I don't want to bo- borrow things on credit. I get that. But you know what everybody looks at on credit, and we all have to have it, is insurance. So having a good credit score, regardless if you use credit to buy something or not, is very, very important. And vast majority of deals, and I deal with some affluent people, uh, and they all finance as well, and they all have phenomenal credit. And when you have someone that is an 800 credit score, and they're worth tens of millions of dollars or $100 million, and they fly their private plane into Louisville to pick up their C8, they, they finance still. And it's crazy that I didn't realize this with this celebrity that I have a customer as. So it was kind of interesting to find that out that they were going to finance the car and whatnot. And I was shocked by that because then they tell me that he uses the lower interest rates to take advantage of his liquid capital, which is understanding. So yes, every single person in this country definitely needs a credit score. And the insurance industry looks at your credit to give you rates. So it's very, very important. So uh, I'm going to ask the chat, live chat, uh, do you know what FICO means? F-I-C-O. It's an abbreviation for a company. Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means, Andy? Uh, federal uh, blah, 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 blah. Eh, wrong. Yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> you don't care. So <laughs> I, Bill Smith, I thanks have, for the two. Your vlogs have helped me in a lot. Great work. I have no job. So unfortunately, my credit score does not matter to me. Because I cannot purchase anything with my credit score. Well, you have now. A cre- if you divorce me, that'll be a whole different ball game, <laughs> yes. and I'll have to worry then. Yes, you have a credit but score. I will but get a couple cars yeah. out of the deal. Yeah, you probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you go for if you divorced me? Uh, I'm going to take strategy. I'm going to take my C7 and my Tesla. <laughs> okay, cool. I get to see it. Sweet, sweet deal. You are the only one that drives a C8. You can drive it. So uh, Tom Tom said it pretty dead on. Uh, Fair Isaacs Corp. Fair Isaacs Corp. F-I-C-O. Fair Isaacs Corp. Fair Isaacs Corporation is the company who developed the credit bureau scores. So um, for the best of my information, it looks like 1989 is when that credit started going. I would think they had some type of credit before then. I don't know. I'm an 80s kid, but... I'm an 80s kid. I'm not a 70s kid. I was born in 1977. So uh, 1989, based off the research, Fair Isaacs Corporation came up with a credit scoring model, and uh, they use that so that way banks and lenders can determine very quickly uh, multiple facts uh, about you as a consumer. One, who do you owe money to? Two, do you pay your money back on a timely basis? Are you late on your payments? Who else are you asking for money. So um, I like to use this analogy. Um, say Mrs. Chevy dude comes up to me and says, hey, can I borrow a hundred bucks? Okay. Do you borrow a hundred dollars? Uh, I don't ever borrow. Yeah, you always take. So she comes up to me and asks, can I borrow a hundred dollars? And, uh, you know, I kind of know her. And I know she's never going to pay me back. So I tell her no. So she goes to the next friend. Hey, listen, uh, can I borrow $100? And this person says yes, but she has no means to repay this payment. But what that person doesn't know is they already asked me, or maybe they asked five people before someone said yes. So they have no idea on who they asked, and that's where your credit bureau inquiries come into play. So this is a fair thing for consumers and for banks to get things going. So, um, So... the biggest question most people have is how a credit score is figured. And uh, this is boop right there on the screen for the live streamers. Uh, 30% of credit score is based off of amounts owed. 35% of your credit score is based off of payment history. 
And then new credit and credit mix is 10% and length of credit history is 15%. So uh, I just bought this new car and um, I financed all of it because I don't want to, I want to have my liquid capital. So um, with this being said, I just took out this big loan and now 30% of my credit score is going to be based off of who I owe for. Luckily, 35% of my credit score is based off of who I pay and the payment history. And that is all perfect. So now my credit score is going to probably drop a little bit because 10% of your credit score is based off of new credit. And I just took out a huge loan of new credit. So what's going to happen to my credit score, which it's, it's, it's already happened. It dropped three points. Okay. So it didn't drop a ton, um, but it dropped a little bit. And then a couple months later, once I show that I can prove to pay this back, which I've already paid my first payment. I don't know. I, I was looking earlier today. I don't remember if it's uh, uh register that I paid a payment yet it says on time, but whatnot. So, but, uh, so that being said, um, you know, my credit score is going to fluctuate a little bit because of these five factors. Now, uh, does anybody see what's missing in the live chat? Do you see what's missing on this? This is, we're going to talk about this here in a little bit. This is the one thing that most people think that their credit score is affected by, but it's not on this list. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. And we'll talk about what that thing is. Um, so it's very, very important to understand this because when you understand this, the amounts owed, the new credit, the payment history, the credit mix, length of credit history, all of that stuff means a big thing. So let's talk about the length of credit history. Let's say, and we've heard this before in the past, let's say that you uh, cancel a credit card. You're like, I don't want this credit card, blah, 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 blah. And you just, boom, close it. And you hear that your credit score goes down. Well, that's because of the 15% length of credit history. So you just closed a credit card that maybe be 10, 15 years old, and you closed it and you have all recent credit or you don't have anything really long. So now your credit score is going to go down because you don't have like that long lasting credit history. And maybe it'll go down because you don't have any other revolving debt, credit card, a line of credit, that's all revolving debt. So with that being said, uh, that we don't have those mixes, that's your score can go down. So it's really, really good things for credit wise is to uh, have a little bit of a mix revolving installment loans, stuff like that for your score. And that's how you get that 800 and 900 credit scores, 750 credit scores, stuff like that. And people who fluctuate a lot, say you buy, say you buy a couple cars every six months, right? I've been known to do that. Uh, you know, yeah, we had a, uh, we had a, we had an interesting year one year. Yeah. <laughs> seemed like every, you know, six months to a year we were buying another car. Yeah. That was really before YouTube, so I didn't really, I, w I wish I had the YouTube channel better or I was posting that I was buying these cars uh, a little bit better back then. So, um, but uh, with that being said, you know, having that mix is a, is a huge importance. So um, let's talk about the uh, score ratings. So um, mix these up, move this right here. So um, your scores are made up of your credit score. This is where your credit scores are coming in play at. So a 579 and below is considered poor credit. This would be your subprime market. Um, 580 to 669, they consider fair. I don't, I don't agree with that. I believe it's 600 and above is fair. Um, a 580 is going to definitely be subprime credit, and it's going to be tough to get a, a loan, which we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but 670 to 739, I agree with this number being good. And then 740 to 799, very good. Uh, and then 800 plus exceptional. So um, I think all three of those things uh, or all five of those things are good with the exception of the fair number. The fair number, I think, should be 601 to 669. It's what I kind of tell everybody um, when I'm looking at things is uh, if you're under a 600 score, you're going to be considered subprime. And there's a lot of things to do uh, about that. So one of the big things, too, that people look at is um, they look at the the phone. I just mentioned looking at the phone. Uh, what's the uh, what's the credit thing that we use to uh, credit look at? karma? It's the number one thing. The number one thing that people look at is credit karma. And what most people don't realize is they're looking at what's called a Vantage Score 3.0. Currently, is what Credit Karma is using. And that's as of today, I looked at it really like an hour before the show just to make sure that nothing's changed with all my notes that I've taken on this subject. So um, with that, you're looking at your phone and you think that you've got a 720 credit score, 
because of the advantage score. And then you walk into a car dealership where you try to get a credit card or a, a mortgage or anything like that. And then all of a sudden you've got a really super, super low credit score because we don't have the five mixes of credit scores or the five categories optimized to get the best credit score. So FICO is used by 90 plus percent of lenders out there. So your FICO score is extremely important and it's difficult to find your FICO score, right? So it's very, very difficult as a consumer to get your FICO score. A lot of places, which I don't agree with this, uh, Capital One's one of them. I'm a huge Capital One fan, but I don't like how they do this. They tell you, hey, we're going to give you your FICO score, but they use a Vantage score 3.0 to tell you what your credit score is. That's not a FICO score. And I don't know how they get away with that. It's beyond me, it's way, way out of my pay grade, but they tell you that it's a FICO score, but it's really not. So, so that's really, really important to understand where that score is coming from and look deeper into what you're looking at. So, um, you know, that's, that's very, very important to do is understand that. So the best way to get your FICO score is have someone do a hard credit poll. A hard credit poll is definitely where you need to get your FICO score 100% because that's what the lenders are going to use. So um, one of the big things too is with that, banks go off of risk-based financing. And, you know, so that's really, really important. So someone just on the live chat says, so since you're making a video about credit and have no mention of the C8, should I be worried about no updates on restart of production? Um, I'm working on that. I think, I think... May 11th is when they're going to restart plant production. Um, it's really interesting because GE local here in, in Louisville, Kentucky, they pretty much make all the washers and dryers and dishwashers for the entire country. Um, completely and uninterrupted for production. One of the biggest employers in Louisville, but, uh, um, but the UAW forced the car manufacturers to shut down and, and, isolate and screw everything up. So, um, I think March 11th is when we're going to start May 11th is when <laughs> March. we're going to see. March was uh, a long we're gonna, time we're, ago. Yeah. We're going to get into more of the C8 stuff. Um, what I see, what I have coming up, what I feel that's going on. I've been working on that for the last couple of weeks, trying to figure stuff out and coming out at the right time. So, so talking about how banks determine, um, your percentage rate or the fact of you getting an approval or decline, so what banks do is they go off of what's called risk-based financing. Risk-based financing is based off of many, many factors that dealerships are not privileged to, right? But when you are dealing with um, mass amounts of credit and mass amounts of people buying cars, you have a pretty good way of the way their algorithms work. So um, with, the, with the algorithms, that they have, they're proprietary and every bank is different. So luckily, again, having relationships with many banks, it helps us out and we get a lot of information from the bank reps um, and all that stuff. So they tell us and they help us out with exactly everything that we need to do. But there's a lot of into it of just saying yes, just because you have a 750 credit score doesn't mean that you're going to get approved. And a lot of times they go off of a magnitude of factors. Like I said, the key word to this is risk-based financing. The government changed it approximately 10 years ago. It really went into effect about eight years ago. 2012 is when it really, really started getting heavy. Maybe 2011 is what we looked at on the what's called risk-based financing. They look at the year of the car, the make of the car, the model sometimes of the car, believe it or not, the model and the make of the car determine what your interest rate is. So let's say Kia is, I don't think Kia is this way as much anymore, but back in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, it was, um, or, or excuse me, I said 2000s, I meant like early, eh, yeah, early 2000s for sure, but more uh, early 2010, 2008, 2007, um, back in that real era, Kias were more acceptable to repossessions and payment defaults and say, a Buick LeSabre, right? So uh, you think that Buick LeSabre is going to get defaulted on. Typically that customer and that buyer is a little bit more aged and can afford that. And they're not going to have a recovery rate on a Buick LeSabre over a Kia. So you can better believe that you walk into a Kia store versus a Honda store or a Chevy store um, that back then that the recovery rate was much higher on a Kia that they would, they would have a higher interest rate on a Kia versus a Chevy or Honda or Lincoln or Cadillac or something like that. Right. So, so the year, make and model definitely play a big role 
into the rates. Sometimes with certain banks, mileage of that car plays in a big role. So sometimes banks won't even finance a car with more than 80, 70, 90, 100, 120,000 miles. Those are all variances of, of each bank and each lender. So with that being said, when you um, go into a car lo- car dealership and you want to buy a car with it has X amount of mileage, um, that may not work real well uh, with the bank's lenders um, or with the lender's guidelines of what they set forth. So that plays in a big, uh, big play too. Very little equipment, but equipment can p- come into play. It's going to be more on the, with the next couple things that I'm going to talk about. The loan to value um, that could come into play on getting something done. The term is what your interest rate is based off of. If you do something for 36, 48, 60, 72, 75, 84, 90, uh, all those, all those have different rates on stuff. So uh, certainly when you go to 80% or excuse me, 84%, why am I saying percent? 84 months or longer, your interest rate is going to go way, way, way up. So, um, so, uh, Rocco said 60% of Corvettes are paid in cash. Absolutely wrong. Nowhere even close to that number. Um, probably like 20 to 30%. So a little bit higher than the average car, but, uh, most Corvettes are financed and you're talking to a guy that's got over 500 deposits on a Corvette. So, um, so I definitely am in line with what's going on with the Corvette sales. So, but, um, loan to value is a big, big, big role. Um, if you have an 80% loan to value, Joel, Thanks for being a new member of the channel. Um, if you have an 80% loan to value, your interest rate is going to be much lower than somebody who's got 100, 110, 115% in, uh, loan to value. And loan to value is based off of several factors. It could be loan to value of invoice. It could be loan to value of MSRP of a new car on a used car. Typically speaking, they look at NADA, and that could be off of NADA retail or NADA trade-in value. So you guys know that I always talk about how you should put 20% down. That's the reason why, because it helps out with so many factors. Um, And then sometimes banks will look at more factors uh, deeper inside your credit bureau, and they look at payment to income. And they look at your payment to income based off of, okay, where's this payment in relation to their income that they state on their credit app? Do you know what a good payment to income is? We've talked about it on the channel before. Payment to income? Yep. Well, I have zero income (laughs) and zero payment, so that's a great one. (laughs) 0% is a very good one. Um, That would be considered a cash buyer. Uh, No, I can't can't afford cash. (laughs) (laughs) So 15% payment to income would would be where you want to be at. So uh, say you have an $80,000 a year. Uh, Let's do this again. $80,000 time divided by 12. You have a six thousand. Let's do. I don't want to do that number. Let's say you have a six thousand dollar monthly income. Fifteen percent means you could do a nine hundred dollar car payment, right? So if you're making twenty five hundred dollars a month, then the banks aren't going to want you to really have over a three seventy five car payment. So um, you'll you'll understand this a little bit more when the kids. Um, uh, I've always like, hey, are we good on payment? Where, what are you making per month? You know, so that way we can figure out because I'm looking at their payment to income. Um, so that way they can pay all their bills and pay the car payments and, you know, not have any issues. And it makes it really, really simple for them. So that way they don't, um, uh, you know, default on anything. You mean you don't want to get stuck paying their bills? No, I've only, luckily we've only got one kid with, uh, that I'm on their, on their car. So yeah, no. that's the, that's the, that's the young one. That's the 19 year old. And you do pay almost part of 20. that. She's almost 20, isn't she? Yeah, she wow. turns 20 in uh, just a little over 20 days. Yeah, it's crazy that we're going to have a t- no t- no teenagers, no more teenagers in our house. Can you believe that? Can we go with no more kids in our house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having no kids in the house would be better. We're she uh, Andy is definitely ready uh, to be uh, an empty nester, right? Yes, I am. Uh, we've never lived without kids. We never have. Never have. So we've never lived together without kids either. Cause since we had kids young, uh, ever, that's what I mean. We've yeah, never yeah. lived together without yeah. kids. So, so it's kind of interesting. So, uh, another determination from the bank on this risk-based financing is how much money you borrow. So sometimes, you know, uh, that, that low dollar amount, say you walk in and you want to borrow five or $6,000, typically that's going to be an older car, but they'll jack the interest rate up on you because uh, the fact of it is, is that you are borrowing low money. So they want to make it worth their while. So we know, I think that's still this way. I'm not sure. Um, but we know that the feds are giving banks 
money at zero percent interest, right? They're not. They're 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 giving them zero percent money. So uh, free money, free money. That's right? what it's called, free right. money. So so the bank, you know, the Fed doesn't say, hey, listen, we're going to give you this much money based off of your lending, what you're how you're going to lend it. We're just going to give you money for free, and you're not going to have to pay us any interest. They don't sit there and be like, "Hey, listen, if you uh, if you loan this money to a car person that's buying a ten year old car with one hundred fifty thousand miles, we're gonna let you borrow this money from us at a fifteen percent interest rate, and then they have to jack it up to make money on their money, right? So that doesn't happen. So when they want to take a five thousand dollar car and say, "Hey, it's fifteen percent interest," they're doing that because they want to make it worth their while. They want to make their risk out there, and the reason why that is is because um, a lot of times the risk comes into this is, this is the mindset of some people. Again, 20 years in the car business, I've seen some crazies, right? So, um, some people will, will think, well, my car's not running, so I'm not going to pay the bank, right? The car broke down and it's, they can't fix it. They can't afford to fix it. Right. So they just stop paying the bank. If it's not working, I'm not paying the bank. It has no bearing to pay the bank because your car is running or not running. Right. But that's the way people think. So that's the way the banks think as well. Well, and we've known people to uh, sit there and purchase a new car when they have a lease or a payment on another car and then just allow that car to be repoed. Yep, yep. (laughs) That happens too, which is crazy. Yep. Um, All right, so uh, one of the – I'm going to talk about this right here. So I put this on the screen for the live streamers, for the podcasters, I put up a graph of what uh, the average credit score is in America right now. So this is what risk-based financing is. When you so, say right now, what are you, because like right now, things are changing. <laughs> live, live data, live data. This is live data. So like everything's changing in the world right now. It is, so. it is all changing, but, uh, um, but you know, something that's changing too, is the banks are actually giving you some forgiveness on this stuff. I mean, I've gotten so many emails from banks saying, Hey, if you haven't problems, pay your bills, please call us. And they're not dinging your credit, which again, we've never experienced anything like this ever hey, in the history. That would be great. As and it's long good as you're for the sitting banks. there communicating yes. that I'm having trouble Paying my bills. Communication is key. Can you help me? So on the screen, we have credit scores from 300 to 392 is 8% of the country. 393 to 484 is 11% of the consumers out there. 485 to 576 is 16%. 577 to 668 is 21. 669 to 760 is 27%. And then 761 up to 850 is 17%. So if you look at it, Seven, almost 75% of people out there have a 577 or higher credit score. Um, majority of them have a 669 or above credit score. So when we go back to our FICO scores, uh, we can see that most people in the United States have good, very good or exceptional credit, which is, which is good. So, uh, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of stories out there that say all these people are in default or this many millions of people in default, but there's... <laughs> I don't know how many billions of people borrow money, right? Millions and millions of people. I think there's what, 300 million people in the country. So, so how many millions of people I I was using this analogy, state farm said for this month that they're going to give $2 billion back to their insurees. And I'm like, what? And that, that, that mind boggled me $2 billion in one month. That, that just tells you how much money they bring in. Yeah, well, I think it was over two months. Because Regardless. Most of the insurance companies are sitting there saying they're giving you a 15%, 20%, 25% discount um, on basically April and May or March and April, something like that um, and everything. But it's still a lot of money they're willing to lose to keep their customers. Right. They're not really losing it, but yeah, they, they're definitely taking care of people. Yeah, I mean, essentially, they're losing profit because right now there is not as many accidents that they're having to pay out for. So I didn't get a chance to read. <laughs> it says, uh, Super Chat came in on the live stream, says, if I put Chevy Dude's social media account decals on my C8, do I get unlimited Super Chats? <laughs> if, I, if I could make them unlimited, I would. It's hilarious. I love it. The um, So here's, here's the big confusing thing with... Um, 
with uh well, let's go I'm, I'm hold on here's I'm, a confusing thing what's that tom tom wanted you to do the average uh scores per age group yeah that's, that <laughs> takes a lot of that takes a lot of diving into yeah so you can almost you can almost assume here's here's what you can assume um a, a kid a kid 18 19 year old kid could have a better credit score than someone in their 30s and 40s right but, but the they depth, may not get the loan. The depth of their file is not going to be there. So it goes back to the risk-based financing. So with with um, someone who has a 750 credit score, if they have a 300 credit card that got them there, they're not going to be able to walk into a dealership or a car lot or a bank and say, hey, listen, I want to borrow $15,000 and not have a co-signer. You're going to have to have a co-signer. You're always going to have to do it. And with our youngest daughter, 800 credit score, couple thousand dollars a month income. I don't know what she makes now, but she's making a little bit more than that. But she still needed me because she didn't have the uh, credit to do it, even though I built her credit up before, she, you know, and I've, and, I, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a hack that you can do um, with your kids because my kids at 13, 14, 15 at 800 plus credit scores. So, but uh, when she turned 18, she couldn't just walk in and buy a car. There's a couple other hacks that we can do too. So that way you don't have to co-sign. I chose not to do them because I didn't want to put that risk on them and screw up. If something bad happened to me that I wouldn't screw them up too. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, uh, let's go into the average interest rates right now. This is today. This is two days data, uh, Kim, coming from value penguin. So here's what, here's why it's so important to have a better interest rate. And we all know this, that, the better interest rate you have, or the better FICO score you have, the lower interest rate you have. So we're going to start down in these 500s, uh, 500 to 589, a 15.24% rate. So that is across the country. And you've got to remember that there are caps in certain states. In Kentucky, on a new car, we can't sell a car loan over 18%. In Georgia, I think it's unlimited. Like this is a couple year old information that I got uh, when I was talking to somebody a couple years ago, like they sell car loans down in Georgia at 35% sometimes brand new cars, 35% mind blowing that I would never, I could, I could, I don't know if I could live with myself doing that. Right. So, but that's not always the dealership. It's most likely the banks. Um, so that Georgia person, you got bad credit, come to Kentucky, you know, you're going to get a new car at no more than 18%. So that's a game to play as well. Um, that 619 and below, you're talking 14%. So you can see that little bit of difference. Um, the, uh, and, and I don't think that I don't see that as an accurate number. I don't see a 14% as an accurate number for somebody in the 600s, maybe 10%, maybe 9%, but not all the way up to 14. Uh, that's 620 to 659, 972. Again, I feel that's a little high based off of my market, my data that I have that's true and accurate to my dealership. I think that's a little high, but this is taking account of everybody in the country. And again, those goofy states that maybe not have a cap on the interest rate. That's 660 to 689, 7%. That's dead on with my market. Dead on 7% uh, being in the 660 to 689 range. Uh, 690, 720, 495. I think a little high right now. Uh, I think I think you can definitely get four and a half, four percent in that range. Um, but seven twenty and above, a three point six, dead on three three. Anything in the threes right now is good. And and one thing too that most people think is like, hey, I can get three point five and or I can get two point nine nine. That difference on interest rate on a car loan is not much money. So um, don't get all twisted up in the head that you can get a 399 or a 350 or a 299 that point of interest if you pay it off early that doesn't mean anything or the life of your loan it's very very minimal uh on it so here's where people get confused on credit because people was like well i just had my mortgage i just redid my mortgage last month and they told me i had an 850 right so check this out for the live for the live streamers um your mind's gonna be blown away for the um for the podcasters, uh, you may have to come to the live stream to look at this. Whoops, wrong one. Um, right here. These are the credit bureau models that are out there. And uh, when you look at these, each one of those is a different version of everything. So basically, I'm showing XFX, Experian, and TransUnion. The most widely used version is FICO score 8. But when you go to auto lending... Auto lendings can use, there's six different versions. Uh, well, I guess there's there's really four different versions, but two per per credit bureau system. Auto score two, auto score eight. 
So uh, auto score five and auto score four. So each one of those can bring back a different model. Uh, those models can bring you back a different score. So when you go one dealership to another dealership and they tell you your credit score, they may be pulling a different model. And sometimes the dealers don't even know. They have to really look into the credit bureau, which model they're pulling. Um, they should be able to, the finance manager should be able to know that, but that's a big thing. So then you go to the credit card decisioning and you see they have a FICO bank card score eight. You see they have a score three, a score two, a score five, a score four. So it's all over the bank, all over on the bank cards. And then lending, they have Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, score two, score five, score four, respectively on all those. And then you have all these new ones. These are new ones that aren't being a whole lot used. You have auto score nine. I don't think our dealership uses that or pulls that. We have bank score nine. So, you know, all these all these models are being used. So it's extremely confusing when someone tells you that uh, you went to dealership A and they tell you you have an 820 credit score and you go to dealership B and they tell you you have a 790. It happened to me today. A customer told me that he had an over 800. Well, I, pull, I pulled his credit and he had a 7... 737 score, something like that, 773, something like that. It didn't matter. He, he, he qualified for the best rates out there, right? So, so but he, he saw that. He's like, this is disappointing. And I just kind of explained to him, which I knew this was going to be the topic tonight. So it was perfect. That it was fresh in my head with all the research that I've done to explain it correctly. I was like, don't worry about that. You, you've got great credit. You pay your bills on time. You know, you're, you're not crazy on debt, you know, stuff like that you'll be fine. And that's the biggest thing to remember out of all this is when you go back to how the credit scores are made, you have a good mix of credit, but the biggest thing is amounts owed and your credit score will decline severely if you have revolving credit. And the biggest thing that I see when I peep, and it's hard to talk to these people out of it sometimes, they're like, well, I can, I can use my line of credit, my home equity line uh, of credit to pay for my car. And I don't have to have a $900 car payment when they're getting a $45,000 car because they can pay it whatever, you know, 20 years, 30 years. Right. Um, I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Why not? It's only a 2% rate. Well, number one, it's probably variable rate. Not very many home equity lines are fixed. There are, they are out there, but not always fixed rates. Um, so you really have to know what, what you're getting into there, but also you put $45,000 on your line of credit now your credit score is going to go down because the FICO score does not like revolving debt. They like uh, different debt. So, um, so you know, that's that's the big thing. So the average auto rates right now, and somebody asked me right, that right up front of what they are. So you can see that really if you have excellent credit somewhere in the threes, maybe in the fours, you'll be fine. Again, you pay your car payment off. You pay more, which most people do pay more. You pay more it's going to lower your interest every single month that you pay. And that 4% doesn't mean anything. You may end up paying 2%. Well, and of course the question at the beginning had to do with the average rate on leasing. So is your leasing interest rate going to be higher than a purchase interest rate or lower or the so, same? So it, it could be, it could be all three. It could be higher, it could be lower. It could be the same. So if they don't really aren't incentivizing a car loan, or a car lease, they may put that at a higher, higher percentage rate. So that way the payment is higher and people are like, Oh, I just want to buy it. So that way it's kind of a, what we call in the industry, a left-handed turndown on it with a bank, but a left-handed, a left-handed, um, sorry for any left-handers out there. It's kind of derogatory towards left hand. Now that I say that out loud, and it's just terminology I've used for 20 years, but, um, the, um, they do that as left-handed approval or left-handed turn down to say, Hey, listen, it's out here, but you're going to have to pay for it. Left-handed turn down philosophy. Basically saying, I don't want to really do it, but I will if I have to. Right, right. Correct. So, um, it's the, the left-handed turn down phrase that I just use is the bank saying, Hey, listen, we'll do this loan, but it's going to be a 21% interest rate. And they may charge the dealership a thousand dollar fee and the customer has to put $20,000 down when they've only got a thousand. Right. So they're like, yeah, we'll do it but they'll give us a green check mark to say, Hey, listen, we're going to approve this deal, but these are the stipulations of this deal. And it's like, we'll never be able to get that done. Right. So it's kind of goofy things. Uh, Corvette lover again, it's a real shame. Credit is for most part, not taught in school. Chevy offers for 84 months, no interest deferred payments, et cetera, offered on any 2020s. Uh, Silverado is the only 2020 that's the 0% is available on. And I agree, you know, um, I was not taught credit uh, growing up. My parent did not have, credit still doesn't have credit 
siblings don't have credit. And so this was all something new uh, to me that I learned, uh, you know, and I thought when I was 18, I applied for credit cards and asked for your mother's maiden name. I truly thought that when I put my mother's maiden name on that credit application, that they would look her up and say, well, she doesn't pay her bills. So he's not going to pay his bills. And they decline me. I just didn't, I didn't know when I was 18. And I like, I applied for like five, six, seven, eight, nine credit cards and had no idea what I was, that I was doing something wrong. Um, so, uh, how to use credit karma, how to use these, uh, what? Oh, I was just going to say that there's been some questions about Experian boost. Mm-hmm. So go yeah, into I, that since you're going to talk credit karma. Yep. Yep. All those, anything that has to do with credit monitoring, um, Experian boost, uh, capital ones, um, what do they call it? Capital ones. I got that too. So like I use capital one and, um, um, credit karma exclusively, uh, and get their real time alerts for various things. And I don't use them so much for looking at my credit score. As I explained earlier, the credit score on the credit karmas and the Experian boost don't really matter because they're not real FICO scores. They're Vantage 3.0, typically speaking. So with that being said, that's a false information in my head. Um, that's like, it's kind of like wearing a bucket on your head. And you have to go date someone or meet someone. And they just tell you that that person's really, really attractive, like supermodel attractive, male or female, doesn't matter. Right. And, and then you take the bucket off the head and they're just ugly. Right. I don't know how to put that in, you know, I'm not trying to be offensive or anything like that, but that's just, that's just, that's kind of the analogy I like to use on that because everybody in this world dates someone, everybody in this world has attractiveness to someone, right? So um, with that being said, looking at that number is just fake in your mind that it's right or wrong. And we talked about that earlier. So with that being said, the best ways to use these credit monitoring services is that exactly, monitor it. Make sure that nothing pops up on your credit bureau that's fraud. Make sure that things are being reported correctly. Make sure that every single month that your uh, vendors that you're using your creditors, they, they are reporting. So especially with someone who's like got subprime credit, this is where this happens the most is that you bought from some type of lending financial institution, some buy here, pay here. Um, you need to make sure that they're reporting your credit that you've got to the credit bureaus. And it's very, very important. And since you brought up sub subprime, um, we've had a couple questions about rebuilding credit after a bankruptcy. Yep. I love, so I love teaching. I love what, teaching that. That's, that could be a whole, <laughs> that could be a whole podcast. Why would you ask a question like that? Uh, so don't you have a video about that? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, in a nutshell to, to not, uh, what do you, what do you say? I rant. So I don't rant yeah. uh, on it. Oh, well, you just rolled your eyes. It's not on camera, but she rolled her eyes. <laughs> um, so to, to not rant about it, the best thing to do is if you do file a bankruptcy, you're coming out of your bankruptcy, you're completely out of it, you got your chapter 13, stuff like that. Um, the thing to do is be open-minded. Um, don't walk in and say, this is the only car I want and this is what I'm going to do and I can afford anything I want. Uh, walk, you know, Be open-minded. If you have to get a Chevy Cruze and you got a family of, of five, congratulations, you're buying a Chevy Cruze because ultimately the end the goal is to get good, reliable transportation, rebuild your credit, and have an affordable payment. Those are your three main goals, coming out of a bankruptcy and getting a car loan. And a car loan is the best thing to do to rebuild your credit. Um, so those three those three goals are mine. Rebuild your credit, affordable payment, reliable transportation. So with that being said, everything else is off the table. I need, an SUV, I need a three-row SUV. I need four-wheel drive. I need this. I need that. Listen, I understand if you live in Colorado, you live in the Northeast Vermont, mud season, all that stuff, you need four-wheel drive. I get that. I'm not saying that to those people. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, people walk in and think they need four-wheel drive. And I ask them, I, this is literally, I ask them this question. I'm like, why do you need four-wheel drive? Oh, when it snows. When's the last time we had snow here in Louisville, Kentucky? Uh, sometime over the winter but nothing substantial. No. Zero. When's it was the, like when's the last snowed time in the we, morning and then gone by the afternoon. When's the last time that we had a two inch snowfall here in Louisville, Kentucky on the roads, not in the grass. Mm, maybe last year. You remember, you remember when someone videoed me in the Camaro that was three winters ago. Remember on the Camaro right down the street here oh. and I'm spinning the wheels cause I was a little stuck. That was three winters ago. So I will, I will joke with them 
I have a lot of fun at work, guys. You got to realize I have a lot of fun. I'm serious and I say something, but I, you know, I've always been taught if you say something with a smile, you can get away with saying anything. So I'm like, <laughs> and uh, so um, with that being said, I will like, oh, well, I drive a Camaro. Well, you probably live in the city. No, I live in the country, last house on the road, up a big hill, and I can get up that hill with my Camaro, real wheel drive car when other people in four wheel drives can't. So it's, it's all about the driving habits, right? So I get that stuff and I have a little fun with that being said, but, um, the, the big thing is, is to walk into the dealership with an open mind. So that way you get those three things done, rebuild credit, reliable transportation, affordability. It's for short term. It's not something long term. It's something very, very short term. Five years is short term guys. We're on this planet for 70, 80, 90 years. Five years of those is a very, very short time of what could be come out of it as a positivity uh, and better your life situation on there. Uh, if you want to live 30 or 40 years of your life in a bad credit situation, that's your choice. Um, but uh, a lot of those choices happen because um, you have sat there and said, pounded on your chest and said, I've earned this. I've, I need this. I've, I've done this, this, and this. I've made sacrifices. No, that's, that's, that's a little bit of narcissistic and egotistical and arrogant think thought processes. You got to do what's right for your family. You got to do what's right for you. And if that's making the sacrifices, that's making the sacrifices. I sell SUVs every day and we never really had an SUV with three kids. We made do. We did. We did. I said never. We really didn't. We had the Dodge Durango. We had the Saab 97X, but we never had an SUV out, outside those two vehicles, correct? No, and they were both leases. They were both leases, correct. So, um... But our first car was a Dodge Stratus. And then we had, I had work cars, right? So um, we had demos there for a long time. We had time. the Dodge Stratus, and then we went to the Dodge Durango. Yep. And, and then, then we Mal Malibu. figured out, stop buying darn Dodges. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also figured out that we had a nice GM discount. Yes. And uh, then we went on and moved on. But really, after... Uh, when, what year did we move? We moved down to Southern Indiana in 08. And so it was, I think summer of 08, we turned in mine or maybe winter of 08. We winter turned of in 08. my Saab 97X and I ended up driving a Grand Prix. You guys saw the question on the uh, screen of how do you even get a car loan after bankruptcy? And that's exactly what I talked about. Go in um, with 20% down, go in with some money. Um, you know, down, get into that payment to income, 80% loan to value, just anything to do to make the bank say, Hey, listen, these people are trying. If you put, if you put a thousand down and that's only 5% of the car loan that looks at the bank's eyes as a down payment, you put 20% down and that's maybe two or $3,000. Now the banks look at that as an investment. And if you do it away from tax season, <laughs> that's a little bit better, but tax season, they love a tax season as well. And they'll take care of you. Uh, my credit is good because of no kids or ex-wives. Corvette lover said on Super <laughs> Chat. I love that. I don't have, I have kids, but I don't have the ex-wife. No, not yet. 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 <laughs> well, we both said yet. <laughs> People are going to take us serious. We got to stop that. So you guys know, I mean, we've been married. We've been together for 26 years, right? 27 now? Coming up on 27? What now? We've been together for 26 or 27 years now. 1992. It's so, oh, eight. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shnikes. I didn't eight. think of what you were even talking yeah. about because I stopped so listening. We joke all the time. And and so, yeah, don't take anything that we're saying against each other serious. Um, I put something on Instagram the other day and somebody triggered over that when I said I let my wife drive. And I'm like, uh, we're just laughing behind the scenes. So don't ever, ever, ever take anything we say when we're going back and forth to serious. So uh, let's get into the last part of the subject. This is the biggest thing. Um, so... And you can tell me if I used uh, the biggest credit score misconception, if I use this word correctly. Uh, the biggest misconception in the credit score ever, ever, is when you have your credit pulled, it hurts your score. Do you think that's true or false? Well, I know the answer, so that's not a good... <laughs> and I said it was a misconception, so you should already have it anyway. It's I like, I already away. know the answer, so it's not a good thing to ask me because I don't like to lie. Yeah, so... So back earlier in the show, I asked people in the live chat to put stuff in there. And I didn't get to see any of those questions, but did anybody put credit inquiries as the biggest misconception of a credit score? So again, putting this back on the screen, oops, I locked that. Uh, 
you don't see inquiries on here, guys. This all equals 100%. This comes from myficoscore.com. This is where the screenshot came from. So this is how a credit score is brought up. So is a new inquiry hurting your credit score? Absolutely not. This is a huge misconception. I battle it every single day. I battled it today. Yeah, I battled it yesterday um, with, with a younger kid. Doesn't know who I am. Didn't, didn't never watch the channel. And uh, he's like, hey, listen, I, I pulled my credit up at the dealership in Michigan, and um, I don't want to pull my credit again. I just need you to tell me what their interest rate is. Dude, I can't tell you an interest rate until I pull credit and submit it to the banks. Well, I don't want my credit score to be hurt. <sighs> it doesn't get hurt. Let me explain why. So back in 2005, FICO, Fair Isaacs Corp, uh, changed their model that an inquiry is not to the consumer's best benefit to hinder you or hurt you when you pull your credit. Prior to 2005, this information is correct. So here we are 15 years later and people still think that pulling their credit hurts their score. Previous to 2005, that was accurate. After 2005, FICO came out and said that it is unfair to a consumer to penalize you to properly search for the best credit, the best the lowest interest rate, the best terms of credit. So they changed this in 2005 so you can go out there and do this. Now, do you go out and get your credit pulled 30 times? No, don't do that. We need to have a little bit of self-conscious on it. Remember I told you the reason the FICO came out is because they want to know who's possibly loaning you money, who's lending you money. So your credit score, your credit pull, if you pull five on one day, Okay, they can see that you're just shopping for a loan. But if you pull 30 over a month or 60 over a month or, or 70 over four months, now what's what's not being reported to your credit bureau yet? Usually there's a 30 to 45 day lag on credit bureaus. That's much quicker nowadays because my car loan went on my credit bureau within a week. Um, so it's going much, much quicker. So, but uh, that's what they're looking at right there. So they want to make sure that they're not lending X amount of dollars to the same people over and over and over again. So if like today, if I went in and bought three cars, a dealership's going to say, Hey, listen, we're going to use three different banks to get these loans approved. So that way the banks don't know, right? It looks like that they're shopping for one car. So that's kind of a game. The dealerships will play if somebody's doing that it happens all the time that people buy two cars. And we usually use two different banks to do that because the banks are like, Oh, wait a second. We don't want to loan these people two car loans. We're only doing one. And a lot of times in the approval notes, they'll say that it's for one car loan as well. So they'll use a separate bank for the second car loan. So they do that a lot on that as well. But a credit inquiry does not hurt your score. Will it lower it? People think yes, because what happens, again, back to our credit score, how a credit score is made, 10% is new credit. And I mentioned this right at the beginning. When you add new credit, when you add new debt to your credit file, your score is going to lower a little bit because the algorithm, which we don't know what the algorithm is, the algorithm is going to want you to prove that this new debt that you incurred, you can pay that back in a timely manner and faithfully. So over time, that credit score goes right back up, sometimes higher than what it was. Um, and what I always tell everybody is 180 days. Um, 180 days is what you're going to look at. Um, what I always tell everybody as well is if you need to refinance a car loan, say you're, say you're a 570 credit score and you're getting a 15% interest rate and you want to refinance that to get a lower interest rate because you're a new person in the credit file. You got a low credit score for that reason. Uh, all of that stuff. So you just had bad luck, didn't pay your bills on time, whatever the case may be, COVID-19 for God's sakes now. Um, the, the biggest thing is, I lost my train of thought, but I just saw him. So <laughs> Can't be doing that, Corvette I know, lover. <laughs> I know, thanks. So, uh, he ran some long enough. I know, so, but getting that paid back is helpful. So if you refinance, I always say make 18 payments and then refinance. You get 18 payments on your credit bureau history. That shows payment history, and it kind of gets that new credit stigmata off your off your score. Thank you, because somebody asked about refinancing after a year. Yes. So that answered that question. So a, a big thing, too, that dealers will pull is they'll be like, they're, they sold you that the higher interest rate's the best you can get, right? 
they'll be like, oh, just come back in three months and refinance it. You know why they do that? And the one, they're greedy. One, two, they have no idea what they're doing. Three, they're idiots. And four, they don't think you're going to come back. So when you do, that costs them business because they can't get you refinanced in, in three months. They're lying to you. So 18 payments, not 18 months, because you buy a car and typically 30 to 45 days to your first payment. So that's a month and a half. So really, it's more like 20 months, right? Do that. Here's a tip. Here's a trick. If you have a low credit score and you can afford a brand new car, zero miles, and you need to sacrifice a little bit, go out and look at the cars. Manufacturers, every manufacturer out there, I can tell you Kia, I can tell you Dodge, I can tell you Volkswagen, I can tell you Chevrolet for sure, 100% with Chevrolet. Um, the um, Chevrolet will give you better interest rates on a Chevy Malibu, a Chevy, not anymore, Cruise, uh, a Chevy Trax right now. All of that stuff, uh, they give you better interest rates if you have bad credit. And they're typically around the 12% range, typically speaking. So if you qualify for that. So 12% on a new car compared to a used car that maybe you get 18, 19, 20, 21%. Because in Kentucky, on a used car, I mentioned what the new car usury rate, rate was. On a used car, it's 24% interest rate. So do you take a 12% interest rate on a car maybe you don't want? to save a whole lot of money, or do you take a 24% interest rate on a car that makes you look cool? And I'll tell you this. Let me think before I say this. I'm, oh, my I'm, goodness. I'm just going to say this. There, um, and, it's, it's, and I'm looking straight in the camera right now. I'm saying this. I am being absolutely truthful. I'm being absolutely from the heart, speaking from the heart. Um, people will walk in and want the coolest looking car, Camaro, Dodge Charger, challenger so that they can look good and take a 24% interest rate and not buy a Chevy Traxxon with a 12% interest rate. And by the way, that charger's got 80,000 miles on it, 90,000 miles on it. They could have a possible uh, breakdown and have a stupid high payment over a Trax. And, and, and check your ego at the door. Do what's right to financially better you. That Charger, that Challenger, that Camaro, that Corvette, that stuff can wait just a couple years. Imagine in five years you can go get something with 10,000 miles on it, 20,000 miles on it. So just go out there and be patient with it. We have a lot. Time's not replaceable, but we do have a lot of time on this planet. And Corvette lover, thank you. appreciate your super chats. <laughs> appreciate you, him messing with you <sighs> once. Because, you know, I like to mess with you. But, uh yeah. So uh, Jeff asks uh, if it has been covered, but which is most common FICO 8 used, Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax? Oops, wrong one. Uh, these are your models right here, Jeff. Uh, put these back on the screen. So the most widely used for all three is FICO score 8. Um, and I can only speak for, for automotive, right? I can't speak for um, lending, mortgages, stuff like that. Because well, we when know it mortgages are, they have a whole different you know, ball game right. on everything. And gosh, getting a mortgage sometimes is more headache than buying a car, but. Oh, a mortgage is horrible. You know, but the, but sometimes the, people don't actually buy houses as often as they buy cars. Yeah. But a lot of times people will buy um, a mortgage and nothing's done in person, right? It's done over the phone or, you know, but when it comes to a mortgage, you have to do, um, um, you have to do a whole lot more stuff um, on it. Why did it just say my, Internet connection was bad. That's weird. I don't know. I have you, excellent. Yeah, YouTube says excellent, but my my uh, switcher just said it was low, lowered. That's not true. It's lying. All right. So, um, ooh, YouTube just did did that too. Your YouTube is not receiving enough. Hmm. That's not good. Stream set. We'll just we'll just sit here. Um, we'll be fine. It'll, it'll air out. I'm almost done. I'm pretty much done anyways. Um, we're just going to do um, some Q&As. Um, some questions? You mean I get to actually ask the questions that have been coming in? Yeah. You know, I've, well, we've covered a few of them already. Um, but we did have a question about or a topic brought up about negative equity raising interest rates. Yeah. So negative equity definitely uh, does that. So, um yeah, I think that stream's fine. It's fine on my phone. So yeah, negative equity definitely is going to uh, do your um, uh, interest rate higher. It's based off a of loan to value. 
So definitely, definitely want to walk into a car loan with no negative equity. Definitely want to walk in. Negative equity is a killer. And, and this is the biggest misconception is when we, um, when we want to, um, trade cars, we blame the dealers because of our negative equity, not because of, um, our, our purchasing habits, right? If you purchased a car 16 months ago and you trade it and you had five grand negative equity and you put no money down, well, you automatically buy a car and you're adding on top of the value of the car, taxes, license, fees, stuff like that. And then you do it again in another year and you have five more grand negative equity. Now you got 10 grand negative equity. See, it came back to excellent. It's really weird that it did that. Um, it, it, come, it came back or you come back <laughs> and you do it again for a third time. And now you're 15, $20,000 negative equity. That negative equity doesn't change any, right? It only gets worse. So, um, it's really, really important to not walk in with negative equity. And I've said this before, I would love to be able to sit here and communicate with customers in front of me and say, Hey, you shouldn't buy a car right now. And I'll, I will do that. Right. But I can read body language really, really well. And if they're not giving me the right body language or the, or the right tone back, or they're just not telling, they're simply just verbalizing that, nope, I'm buying a car. And I don't care what you say. I'm selling them a damn car, plain and simple, because if I don't do it, the next dealership will. And I don't, I don't provide for my family. So that's probably like the one thing that I'm the typical car salesman is I'll sell anybody a car, right? They're there for a reason. I don't walk up to doors and knock on them and say, Hey, you want to buy a car? They're coming to me. I'm providing a service. I'm doing it ethically. If I need to provide a little bit of um, information to the customer, I will. But if they don't want to take my information as credible then or adhere to it, then that's fine. It's kind of like the doctor saying, hey, you have cancer. You need to go do chemo. But you're like, screw chemo. I'm not doing it. And you die. You can't blame the doctor, right? So that's kind of the way I look at it uh, from a professional standpoint as well. So with that being said, we're going to end the podcast portion of this live stream. Guys, we really appreciate you being on the podcast. Uh, we're always on for a few minutes prior and, if, and, and several minutes after, usually about 25, 30 minutes afterwards uh, on the live stream. So if you can join us on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on the live stream, we'd love to see you. We'd love to see your comments. We'd love to interact with you um, as, as it's just enjoy enjoyable for us. Uh, I see so many people here that are here every week and they're here for the entire stream. So it's just absolutely amazing. So, um, as always, from uh, Mrs. Chevy Dude and myself. Oh, am I still the missus? You're still the missus. We'll leave you as the missus. <laughs> we appreciate you listening. Thanks again for listening. Have a great day and drive safely. There we go. You know, when I uh, the stream went bad, I'm like, who's uploading something, right? Yeah, well, it went. There was comments that it, it cut out. Yeah, it's really weird. That must have been something with YouTube. So um, with, I don't... With, you, with YouTube, what maybe people haven't seen. So I'm behind the scenes here and I look at a lot of YouTube stuff. YouTube actually dumbed down the uh, bandwidth of your of videos. They took every video to 480p is what they said. I didn't experience it right here, but that's what they said is they took everything down to 480p because there were so many users on YouTube and they were just sucking up the bandwidth and YouTube couldn't handle it. So they knocked everything down to 480p and you had to go in there and manually adjust it. They did that at the beginning of March, middle of March, I think. Uh, they just Cause keep, I was, I was scared about the live stream. Was it, what's that, what's that going to affect it? They just keep messing with stuff. They do. They have to. Um, so what's another question we can, we can ask. <laughs> well, uh, where, I mean, Oh, Cliff's dead on. I just, Cliff just said something dead on. I didn't get into this. I wanted to get into this. Um, I didn't get into credit repair on this, on the, on the live, on the podcast. And I didn't get into credit management. And That's cause those are, they could be totally different. <laughs> like I could group those three together. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, these debt consolidation people, um, the, you know, absolutely, uh, everything that they do, you can do, uh, credit repair, kind of the same thing, but sometimes if you can find an ethical credit repair person, they're, they're kind of worth the money. Sometimes you don't want to pay them thousands, not even hundreds, maybe two or 300 bucks. If I could pay somebody two or 300 bucks to get something done, um, you know, you know, and save me a lot of time and headache and a lot of work like credit repair does take a lot of do it. Right. But you want to make sure you get somebody done. And, and really it's kind of like, it's kind of like my stockbroker, right? Uh, I, I, I learned this back in the early two thousands. I worked for a Cadillac Saab Volvo Hummer dealership. So I really got into 
um, dealing with some affluent people. And you got to realize I started selling cars at Saturn when people would walk in and get a $150 car payment, right? And then my first car deal I did at the Cadillac store, the car payment was $1,500. This is coming from a guy who's selling $150 and $200 car payments. And I'm like, $1,500. And I'm thinking this is most of my income. $1,500. Holy crap. Wow. And, and, uh, the manager at the time gave me the best advice. And I remember it to this day, he said, listen, it's not your money and do not go in there and act like it's a lot of money because $1,500 may not be a lot of money to him. And I, and I, I keep that advice to this day. I'm like, okay, I go in there. Guy makes $2.3 million a year. 1500 bucks was a drop in a hat for him on a month, uh, per month on a lease, uh, Hummer H2, like, or as Cadillac Escalade, I mean. And, uh, and I'm like, sweet. Sounds good. It was a two year, it was a two year lease, uh, like 30,000 miles a year or something like that. And, uh, uh, best advice I ever got in the car business was right there. Um, but, uh, um, but, but I've learned over time that if I can get somebody to do work for me, you know, like I pay an editor, right? I pay a thumbnail person. Now, um, I pay a couple other things to do services that I do for YouTube channel. It's, it's freed up time for me to one, do these live streams, right? So this would be something that I would come home on a Tuesday night and be editing videos. Well, instead of editing videos, now I can be here with you guys and, and help you guys out. So, so that's, that's, that's where me paying someone to do something, to do it, um, do, do my job for me that I can delegate that stuff. And that's kind of the way I look at a credit repair. And somebody said credit repair is a scam. I think there is a lot of scams out there, but this is where I was going with this. And I got, I, I did get off topic. I got, I got ranty. <laughs> did right? you? Yeah, I did. I, so I, I learned to just stop listening. Yeah. So stockbroker that I had a customer, he was a customer of, and he taught me this as well is, uh, he's in this nice million dollar house. Right. And I'm in a Cadillac store and, um, doctors are walking in with their expensive Rolexes and stuff like that. And, and a lot of people will be like, I, I would never wear this with my patients or stuff like that. Uh, because they would think I'm making too much money. So I asked the stockbroker that he said, I said, aren't you afraid that people would see you making too much money off of them? He says, Nope. He says, because, um, uh, they know that if I'm making money, they're, they're making, making money. money. <laughs> right. So I took that, I took that and I learned from that. I'm like, that's good. So all these stockbrokers and people who are preaching to you to do this, do that, do this, do this. I mean, I tell you what, I want to pull their credit every single time. So a credit repair person, I want to see their credit. I want to see if they use the stuff on there. I want to see their credit before and credit after they got into credit repair. Um, because you know, are they doing, are they doing good things? You know? So, uh, it's kind of interesting. So I think there is a lot of scams out there on the credit repair, uh, trucker Ed show. Thanks for the five. Uh, but, uh, I think there's a lot of good ones out there too. So I have a friend, I have a friend who did it. I'm not sure if he's doing it still. He bounces all over the place. He got coronavirus for a couple weeks. Um, and, uh, um, I'm not sure if he's still doing it anymore. I wanted to work with him and, and get him some business because I was going to have him on the show for credit repair. Uh, it's, it's Matt, if you don't know who I'm talking about. Um, and I thought that would be a good episode of having him on because he would he would do video with me. Um, uh, for, he lives in Michigan. And he would do video on me, and, and it's a pretty knowledgeable guy. But I don't know if he's still doing it anymore. And he job hops around a little bit. There's the the internet's funny because uh, and I took some heat from a comment like this, but it was hilarious. Um, uh, these car sales people think they get internet famous, and then they move on to something else, and then they find out that oh shoot, this internet famous thing uh, is only in my mind. And they go on to be a manager. They go on to be uh, a trainer. Uh, they, they do stuff like that. And they find out that there's a lot of hustle and grind in that stuff. And they come back to being a car salesman, which I see all the time. And the people who left the car business to be a trainer is probably hurting right now because dealerships aren't paying trainers to train people right now. I promise you that. Um, Tom Tom's made a couple of comments about, you should be a finance manager. And then he's like, are you at least a, you know, I don't know who he's talking about right now. Um, says, are you at least a sales manager since you're so good at what you do? And it's like, do I tell him my background? I would say, just go ahead okay. and give your whole background. Okay. Can I rant <laughs> a little bit? No. Okay. <laughs> so I got in the car business in 2000 and we're behind on our mortgage payment. We had a kid on the way, uh, which we never wish we had that kid. Um, I don't she's, know. If she's, she's right even, above us. If she's um, even listening to this so, stream. <laughs> uh, so, um, she usually is on the stream, but, uh, um, the, 
so we were not in a good position, right? So I was a car salesman. I took this car salesman job at Saturn of Fort Wayne in Fort Wayne, Indiana, $1,800 a month or $1,500 a month, um, guaranteed salary. And then if I sold more cars, I got paid more money. And I'm like, sweet, at least I get $1,500 a month, right? And so uh, two years goes by, I moved to the Cadillac store. Um, I got into really good graces with the finance manager of the Cadillac store, which he's never been in good graces with anybody. His name has been Dennis Pressler. And um, uh, Denny had a heart attack on the last day of the month in like March, April, May, something like that in 2002, 2003, something right around there. And um, he had groomed me to take over that position when he retired. God forbid he passed away. And so, so now everybody's dying for this job. Well, I had been doing it for a while. He's been teaching me how to do it. So I came in there and uh, just did it. Didn't even know I was going to get paid to do the job. I just did it for the, because I needed to do it for the company. I needed to do it to keep the, the yeah, viable, you were the selling business cars viable at the same time. I was, I was a car salesman. So that's what got me into a uh, finance manager. So I was a finance manager from 2002 to 2006. Um, excuse me, 2002 to 2008 In 2008, um, I kind of just did, I kind of did what I was just talking about. These sales, these salesmen going to sales trainer. I wanted to move up. There was no moving up. Um, so I moved to Southern Indiana to work for a three store franchise Chevrolet dealer and, um, to be a manager with being groomed to be the GM of one of their stores. Well, that didn't work out. That was a horrible, horrible, horrible move. And we went through the economy didn't make any money those couple of years, stressed out again. And because I told you guys earlier that, um, growing up with my parents not having money, um, that people, you know, just, you know, we were on welfare and WIC and all this stuff. So I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I got three kids. I got a wife, you know, we're, we're, we're almost, we're in the middle ages of the kids. So this life is almost over. And then me and her can do things on our own travel and stuff like that. So I said, screw it. I'm not going to be a manager anymore because it was extremely difficult to get other people to be motivated during the, during the economy to, uh, come in and sell cars. So, and if they weren't selling, you weren't making, money. I wasn't making money. So, um, and, and I felt kind of obligated not to go out there and sell a car and not give it to a salesman. I could do that. Right. I'd go out there and sell a car and not give a salesman a commission, but I kind of felt that was stealing. So I didn't do that as much as I wanted to. Um, so in 2010, when we came out of the economy, I left the dealership, literally walked out because they belittled me so bad and, uh, walked out, went to Bachman Chevrolet. They gave me a job and I love them every day. And I just said, I'm going to be a salesman. And one of the questions they asked me in the interview is you've been a manager from 2002 to 2010. Can you go back in to be a salesman? It's like, and I told him like, this exact answer, Ryan Bachman, the owner of our company, I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, absolutely I can because a sales manager is just a glorified salesman with more responsibilities. And when I said that on the, on the cuff, never thought about it, never processed it or never practiced it. When that happened, that, that hit me right then and there is like, oh crap. I don't have to babysit car salesmen anymore. I don't have to deal with drama from customers. I don't have to deal with stupid complaints that managers get. I don't have to deal with any of that. So here I am 10 years later as a salesman, right? As a salesman. And um, uh, I see the stupid complaints that our sales managers get. Uh, I see the stupid things that people that happen. And I'm like, that's why I'm not a manager anymore. And I turn around and I'll walk out of the sales office and I go back to doing what I want to do. I come and go as I please. I have no stress with the job. I don't have to stay late if I don't have to, if I don't want to stay late, if a customer needs me to stay late, yes, I can. But I don't have in my store, I've got 23 salespeople. So I don't have 23 odds of having to stay over closing time when I've been there from nine to nine. So, so yeah, so I have the experience in this business and that's why, um, um, I love doing this and love teaching this because that freed up in 2010 to start doing YouTube and teaching people the car business. And, uh, hopefully, you know, I, I know that's long, but I, I like to give a lot of detail on things that I do. And I like to just let everybody know that, Hey, it's this, it's this, and this, this is like a one way conversation, right? So in person, I don't talk much. Are I don't, you sure about that? Are you kidding me? I mean, we're just, we're just going to black you out. Okay. You can black me out, but, uh, if we go someplace, you're the one who's doing all the talking and that's not true. Because I'm the one in the background. My philosophy is you have two of these, one of these, use them accordingly. 
two ears, one mouth, use them accordingly. I live and die by that. I always do more listening than talking, but we're on a, we're on a podcast uh-huh. with, I'm, I'm going to mute you. How do I mute you? You're muted. <laughs> Nobody can hear you. You can't even talk. I can't even hear you. Can hear me. I, I see your mouth. I see your lips loop moving, but I don't hear you. I can't do what I want to do on YouTube <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. No, I don't, I don't want to manage your title. Tom, Tom said I'm the internet manager. I, I mean, I do what I want in a non arrogant way. Like they don't come to me and say, Hey, listen, this, 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 and this, if I get a complaint from someone that, you know, it's like, they really don't even tell me about it. Like we will be drinking one night and they're like, yeah, I got a complaint of you're driving too fast. And I'm like, and I told them when I got the C8, I'm like, get ready for those complaints again. Cause my name's all over it. And they're going to call here pissed off. Cause I'm a fast driver. I mean, I drive everywhere I go. Oh wait, are the police listening? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think Jordan drive on this one. <laughs> the speed limit. Not Jordan. I'm not worried about Jordan. <laughs> Kentucky State Police, Indiana State Police, LMPD. I only drive the speed limit everywhere I go. So, um, so when you're going so slow, people want to get around you because they're impatient, and um, uh, you're so very they impatient. so that I am very very patient. Uh, remember this, this is no, Impatient. no, this is my story. Everything's opposite <laughs> in this story of what I really am compared to what's on the street. So, uh, so when the people are impatient, wanting to get around you, um, you speed a lot and, uh, you hate people in the left lane and <laughs> I don't do any gestures though. I don't honk at them. Oh, look, dude, you're the best You're Uh, I you're in the best hands down but your wife and your Corvette are the Holy Trinity. Just accept it. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that I'm the better one. She is the better one. All, all she his married coworker. Up, no, <laughs> all his coworkers, even customers. The other day, one of his customers was on the uh, phone and it was, you were talking through the car and I said something and he's like, Oh, I now know the boss is on. Oh, that so, was Mike Rice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, Totally. It was like, Oh, I know who to talk to now. <laughs> yeah. So, and most of my friends are all from the car business, right? I, I mean, in, in 1999, I didn't really have a whole lot of friends and now all my friends I sold cars to. And now like all this YouTube, all these YouTube friends that, you know, they come to the dealership and I'm friends with everybody. And I love people, even, even the haters, right? Even that guy was just making fun of us and calling us ugly so be it right i mean most 90 percent of people would never ever say that to your face they're behind a keyboard we don't know who he is she is it is non-gender right so (laughs) just always assume it's a male because that's what your statistics say yes correct but women don't really do that right so um but you know that person came in, I would help them in a heartbeat. Now, if you're disrespectful to my face, it's a different story. I've, I've got customers I would never, ever sell a car to. There's a Corvette club here in Louisville, Kentucky, that most of the people in that club I would never, ever, ever sell a car to because they're absolutely disrespectful and they say one thing to your face and then they go behind your back and trash you. So I've got wind of that and I'm like, nope, never helping you again. I don't even want you to buy a car from my dealership. Uh, Corvette lover, if that's as fast as you've gone in that car, uh, there's a problem. Put a one in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a major problem there. <laughs> Even I've done faster than that, and I'm the type who likes to go very little over the speed limit. Yeah. I, I know when fishing said, I need a truck. Um, if you need a truck, first thing to do is look at our website, see if I've got it. Secondly, if we do have it, just go to Bachman or excuse me, go to Chevy com and schedule an appointment with me on my calendar. And I call you like dead on the time, unless I, something runs late or whatever, but I live and die by the calendar on my phone and it's done in 15 minute increments. So like literally my life has lived 15 minutes at a time and everything. So like every day I, or every Tuesday, I I block out from 4 PM to 9 PM on my calendar for this live stream. Right. So, uh, but outside that it's (laughs) boom, boom, boom. Oh, you know, I got a, I got a ticket. I got a ticket, um, Uh, back in 2009. uh, I got a ticket, really good ticket, six, um, three digit ticket. Yeah. It was actually for 106. Yeah, but I wasn't doing the 106. I know. The statute of limitations ran out on that ticket because I could probably tell the truth now. <laughs> it, it was for, you know, you did. I should have ran from that cop. 
I really should have because she took five miles to catch up to me when I slowed down. I should have ran from her. But, but uh, you're better than that. I am better than that. I don't run from cops. I'll take my licks. But um, because you're going to get in more trouble. You cannot run the radio. But um, uh, and then now, especially right, because my name's all over my car um, and uh, um, there's 2,700 C8s in the country. That's all there's built. So a white one in Louisville, Kentucky. It's really easy to just go to Bachman Chevrolet and say, hey, have you guys sold a white Corvette? And then they pull up and are like, oh, hey, there's that white Corvette in the parking lot. Who Whose car is this? <laughs> yeah. Um, I now lost. Thomas, oh. Thomas is loving the back and forth. Yeah, we, you know, this is just us, right? So we, we told the beginning of the live stream because we said something that we're like, oh, crap. You know, I think we were talking about each other dying or divorcing or something like that. And no, uh, I'm dying. I'm not that. No, mean. I said we're not killed each other, right? Because oh, I was, yes. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we've been together it's for like, I'm not mean. 28, you are mean. <laughs> uh, 28 years uh, together, high school sweethearts. We met when we were 15 years old, 14 years old for you. Um, and celebrating here, here our 21st anniversary in just over a month. Maybe if you're lucky. Yeah. You're supposed to be in England then, but we got to Hawaii last year. For the, that was the first time that we left the left. I left the continent of the United States was going to Hawaii, and we were supposed to go to England this year for the for the Cubs game. That's not happening. But uh, AC asked, "When's the C7 versus C8 race?" We're working on that. We're working on that. The, we got so get- last week's drag race was an impromptu. And I couldn't find anybody to take the C7 um, with us so that could take time off and stuff like that. And we couldn't um, race them. No, we could. Oh, that's right. No, yeah, you're right. That was the thing. But then they're like no side by side racing, which why I don't know why that was. But um, but we 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 went with the rules, right? No side by side racing was what we were told. So we went by the rules. And they didn't do no, any no side issues. by sides. No zero out of the whole day there. Zero side by side. We only had we only had like we had maybe fifteen people there at the beginning, but those people got there really early and ran their practice runs and then left, and then we only had like eight seven, nine people, uh, Waikiki, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Waikiki smoke. When you come back to Hawaii, I was just thinking about that. I really want to go back to Hawaii. We were there for 12 days, 13 days. Were we there? 13? We were there. No, we were there seven days and then we spent a couple oh, days. Okay. In yeah. LA. We were gone for 15 days or 14 days or something like that or 13 or something. But, um, I would like to, uh, I would like to go back and just, just, just hang out again. Right. We had a blast on Honolulu, but maybe hit a different island. I think you know? Maui would be our next. Especially because everybody says that Honolulu is the, uh, whatever the island is, Oahu, Oahu. Oahu. Oahu Island, that that's the busy, that's the tourist attraction. Um, I've always I've always thought Maui was the way to go, but, you know. Oh, no. Now you're getting. I saw uh, it. Go ahead and block AC, Dr. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> no, 72 Nova said, I respected you until you actually admitted you were a Cubs fan. He's oh, a, the Cardinals are America's team. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. But go ahead and block seven. <laughs> Corvette lover. If it wasn't for lawyers, I'd have no license. Yeah, I tell you, lawyers my, are nice. My my attorney, I you know, so um, I had that jerk of a cop, St. Matthew's cop, pull me over for no reason, uh, ticket me for no reason, and I had to fight that, and I was willing to spend some money because he was not going to get over on me. I did not file a complaint against him. I seriously thought about it, but I have so many friends who are police officers that I didn't, I didn't want it to ruin a relationship. Right. Because that's like police officers get formal complaints on some of the stupidest stuff. So I just, I didn't think this was too stupid, but I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to do anything. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Otag says, I'm a Braves fan because I hate myself and like being disappointed every year. You must well, be an Eagles fan too, or a Falcons fan too. This year, we're all disappointed <laughs> yeah. because, you know, baseball hasn't even started. Who knows if there'll actually be a World Series, and if there is, it's going to be because somebody won a whole, you know, 60 games if we get <laughs> going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, we had a blast. I haven't ate yet today. I no, I, I haven't ate since lunch, since lunch uh, at 11 o'clock. So I'm hungry. Oh, you're hungry? Go make me a sandwich, would you? No. Oh, man. And I didn't get a response to my text message, so. For who, Onion? No, Zach. Oh. So uh, as always, we're going to end it here. So we really appreciate you guys being on here. I know we were off last week because we were traveling and doing stuff like that. But We had a busy week last week. I'm not sure if we're going to be live Friday night because I got – 
I got. Um, what do you have? Uh, you haven't told me anything. Dra- well, drag racing because uh, oh, we have the you dyno, got those videos. and then I got two. Yeah, we got up. two drag racing videos. They're going to be awesome. They're going to be absolutely epic. So I'm not sure if we're going to do something Friday night um, because I want to launch the drag racing day one video tomorrow, and then day two video I really want to do on Friday night. So we'll see. And uh, Tom Tom says, "What's the third dealership at Bachman? It's Subaru, Chevy, Volkswagen, and then there's also a Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram." Uh, and Hyundai, 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 it's <laughs> whatever yeah. store. Yes. Uh, Come and then Friday. AC, he won't get on top of the Mrs. Chevy dude. Merch. I know. I know. You know, I, I got to figure something out. So here's what I really need. Right. Like I want to, I want to do more merch and, and there's 168 people on here right now and nobody's going to listen to this thing for an hour and a half or how long we've been on. Um, nobody wants uh, to listen yeah, to nobody's you. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to listen to the, I don't even want to listen to you. So my goal, I need somebody who can make up more merch. Like this is my idea, right? So this is me. Um, and, and this is the best I could come up with. So I really need to hire a designer. I've tried for years to hire, hire a designer and they want like I my, mean, you came up with this. Yeah, I know, but that's the Chevy Chevy's done this, does the car. Right. And of course they and, can't see cause you didn't put the camera on me right there. You know, so I'm, but, uh, uh, but that's, you know, she- you know, Chevy and I got permission to use it, but it's, it's just like, you know, I want my own stuff. I want my own unique stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a copycat. So, um, so, but ultimately what I want to do is when I move up to the next Corvette is give the white C8 in the garage away. And I want to do that through merch sales because that'll supplement, that'll supplement me just giving a hundred thousand dollar car away. So, um, so that's what I want to do. So if anybody out there is a graphic designer can come up with merch for her, for me, other things, hats, shirts. I know people keep saying I need a different name than Mrs. Chevy dude. I know. And I can't think of anything that I like. That's not already like played out. Yo, Adrian. No, <laughs> because you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's just not easy to figure this stuff out and definitely don't want to be copying other people. Yep. But I'm, I'm, I'm never a copycat. I always like to be unique. And if it slows me down, it slows me down. So, but uh, guys, as always, I love it. They do merchandise, stickers, hats, design, tons of stuff. So who's that? I didn't see Cliff tell me anything. Uh, bunker branding. Bunker branding. All right. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Demolition Everybody. Ranch owns it. Demolition Ranch. So those are, um, bunker branding. So the, um, like TJ, like I met TJ hunt and he's got hunt and company. Right. And I'm like, that's awesome. So like my company name for the YouTube channel is called burnt rubber media. So I could expand on the burnt rubber media very, very easily. So, um, there's a lot of stuff that I can do. I just, I, I, I can't get the creative juices flowing for this stuff. So that's why I need help. And everybody, I, everybody I talk to or call, um, they're like, yeah, just tell us what you want to do. I need your help. That's why I'm calling you. <laughs> so that's it. Guys, as always, thanks again for watching. We'll leave it here. If you have anything, hit me up, chevydude.com. Have a great evening. Drive safe. And uh, what do I do? Have a- you said I, drive I totally safe should. already. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Drive safe. Good please. night. <laughs>